A woman, cranky because her husband was late coming home again, decided to leave a note, saying, I've had enough and have left you. Don't bother coming after me. Then she hid under the bed to see his reaction. After a short while, the husband comes home, and she can hear him in the kitchen before he comes into the bedroom. She could see him walk towards the dresser and pick up the note. After a few minutes, he wrote something on it before picking up the phone and calling someone. She's finally gone. Yeah, I know, about bloody time. I'm coming to see you. Put on that sexy French nighty. I love you. I can't wait to see you. We'll do all the naughty things you like. He hung up, grabbed his keys, and left. She heard the car drive off as she came out from under the bed. Seething with rage and tears in her eyes, she grabbed the note to see what he wrote. I can see your feet. We're out of bread, be back in five minutes. Danny cannot make his wife orgasm, so he goes to the doctor for some advice. He goes to the doctor and says, Look, I just can't bring my wife to orgasm in bed, it's a real problem. The doctor says, Well, is it too warm? Yes, it's absolutely sweltering. Then get an air conditioner. I can't afford an air conditioner, doctor. I'm too poor. Well, Danny, do you have a good friend? I mean, a real close friend? Yeah, I've got a close friend, Frank. Well, ask your friend Frank to stand over you and your wife with a towel, wafting you both to cool you down. That might help. So, Danny asks Frank for this favor, who then agrees to help him. That night, Danny is in bed with his wife, pounding away with Frank's towel, but it's doing nothing for her. Danny says, Well, this isn't working. Let's swap. So Danny takes the towel and starts wafting Frank, who is now making love to Danny's wife. Not long after, Danny's wife goes, Oh, oh, that's it. I'm about to come. I'm going to come. Danny shouts triumphantly. You see, Frank? That's how you waft a fucking towel. A woman goes to buy a parrot. The prices are $100, $200, and $15. She asks why the last one is so cheap. Because he used to live in a brothel, says the shopkeeper. She pays $15. When she gets home, the parrot says, Puck me, a new brothel. The woman laughs. When her daughters get home, the parrot says, Puck me, two new prozies. The girls laugh too. When the dad gets home, the parrot says, Puck me, Pete, I haven't seen you for weeks. Ops. A man had three beautiful girlfriends but didn't know which one to marry. As a test, he decided to give each woman $5,000 to see how they would spend it. The first girlfriend went out and got herself. A complete makeover, she told him. I spent the money so I could look pretty for you because I love you so much. The second went shopping and bought the man new golf clubs, an iPad, and an 80-inch flat-screen television. She said, I bought these gifts for you because I love you so much. The third woman took the $5,000 and invested it in the stock market, doubled her investment, returned $5,000 to the man, and reinvested the rest. She said, I am investing the rest of the money for our future because I love you so much. The man thought long and hard about how each of his girlfriends had spent the money. And then he decided to marry the one with the biggest tits. Oops. A woman was three months pregnant when she fell into a deep coma and woke up after about 10 months. The woman asked the doctor about her baby. Doctor, you had twins, a boy and a girl. They're both fine. And your brother named them for you. Woman, no, no, no. Not my brother. He's an idiot. What did he name the girl? Dr. Denise. 
Woman, oh, that's actually a nice name. What about the boy? Doctor, deeply sized a nephew. Ops. A man boarded an airplane and took his seat. As he settled in, he glanced up and saw the most beautiful woman boarding the plane. He soon realized she was heading straight toward his seat. As fate would have it, she took the seat right beside his. Eager to strike up a conversation, he blurted it out. Business trip or pleasure? She turned, smiled, and said, Business. I'm going to the annual Nymphomaniacs of America convention in Boston. He swallowed hard. Here was the most gorgeous woman he had ever seen. Sitting next to him, she was going to a meeting of nymphomaniacs. Struggling to maintain his composure, he calmly asked, What's your business at this convention? Lecturer, she responded. I use information that I have learned from my personal experiences to debunk some of the popular myths about sexuality. Really? He said. And what kind of myths are there? Well, she explained. One popular myth is that African American men are the most well endowed of all men, when in fact it is the Native American Indian who is most likely to possess that trait. Another popular myth is that Frenchmen are the best lovers, when actually it is men of Mexican descent who are the best. I have also discovered that the lover with absolutely the best stamina is the southern redneck. Suddenly, the woman became a little uncomfortable and blushed. I'm sorry, she said. I shouldn't really be discussing all of this with you. I don't even know your name. Tonto. The man said, Tonto Gonzalez, but my friends call me Bubba. Ops. A man in a hot air balloon realized he was lost. He reduced his altitude and spotted a woman below. He descended a bit more and shouted, Excuse me, can you help me? I promised a friend I would meet him an hour ago, but I don't know where I am. The woman below replied, you are in a hot air balloon hovering approximately 30 feet above the ground. You are between 40 and 41 degrees north latitude and between 59 and 60 degrees west longitude. You must be a programmer, said the balloonist. I am, replied the woman. How did you know? Well, answered the balloonist, everything you told me is technically correct but I have no idea what to make of your information, and the fact is, I am still lost. Frankly, you've not been much help so far. The woman below responded, you must be a manager. I am, replied the balloonist, but how did you know? Well, said the woman, you don't know where you are or where you are going. You have risen to where you are due to a large quantity of hot air. You made a promise that you have no idea how to keep, and you expect me to solve your problem. The fact is, you are in exactly the same position you were in before we met, but now, somehow, it's my fault. Ops. 